After a year on the road, I thought I'd get tired of traveling. The endless clatter of railways, highways, and everything in between. But as my train pulled into the station at Bellariva, I felt every bit as excited as the first day of my journey. A whole year. It felt like a lifetime. The places I'd seen, the people I'd met, of course, the forgotten treasures I'd given a new lease of life along the way. I'm a restorer by trade. Bringing our most beloved possessions back to life is what I love to do. I'd been traveling for months, working my way from one town to the next, fixing everything from family heirlooms to VCRs. Bella Riva was my chance to take a break. Unfortunately, that would have to wait until after I'd unpacked. I picked up these sunglasses on my last stop. Hopefully I'm cool enough to pull them off. The tools of my trade. No hope of restoring things without these. I saw a guitarist wearing these at a show once. Rock and roll repair woman, at your service. My favorite overalls. These will never go out of style. Looking forward to taking more close-ups of my fingers with this. I'll hand these out once I'm settled in. Fingers crossed they get me some work. Finally, I'd made it to Bella Riva. I'd come for the food festival, taking place in a few days' time. After living off TV dinners and instant ramen for the last few months, I was craving a decent meal. Of course, I'd need to earn enough money to pay for it, so I figured I'd head out the next day and find some work. My parents never wanted me to go. They wanted me to stay in their shop and have a simple, stationary life. I knew there was a world out there, beyond the four walls of our antique store, that I had to be a part of. I daydreamed constantly about the weird and wonderful places each of our antiques came from. I loved figuring out their stories, revealing the memories hidden beneath the screws and wires. My story in Bellariva began with a little girl, and a voice she was longing to hear. It was my first morning in Bella Riva and I couldn't wait to leave my hotel and explore. It was a quiet town, its streets and alleyways basking peacefully in the hot morning sun. In the main square, meanwhile, preparations were underway for the festival in a few days' time. As I handed out my flyers, I wondered what the people of Bella Riva would need me to fix. So far, everything here seemed perfect. I was starting to worry I'd made a mistake when I felt someone tapping me on the back. Hi, I'm Izzy. Do you know how to fix things? It was a little girl, maybe seven years old, who must have gotten hold of one of my flyers. She rummaged around in her backpack until she hauled out a battered red cassette deck. My tape is broken and I can't make it work anymore. I tried to fix it myself, but there's this metal thing in the way. Can you try?
those batteries look like they need replacing. Luckily, I have some spares. Why did you do that? How did you do that? I didn't see. Sit by your side and hold you so tight. No, when it finished, Izzy picked up the tape deck and tucked it carefully into her backpack. Thanks, Maria. You're the best person at fixing things ever. No problem. Who was that singing? They're very good. It's my mom. She, she's not here anymore. Izzy trailed off. It was the kind of silence a cassette tape would never be enough to fill. When Izzy's friends called for her, she dug deep into her pockets, looking for something to pay me with. Eventually, she produced a grand total of a stick of gum, three mismatched buttons, and a yo-yo. I usually preferred a check, but Izzy looked so serious, I wrote out a full receipt. She seemed like a happy kid, but Beneath it all, part of her life had been shattered. The part I wouldn't be able to fix. My first repair complete, I spent the rest of the day doing small jobs in and around the square. I was exhausted when I got back to my hotel and found a message asking me to make one more visit. The address led me to a quaint little house, a stone's throw from the beach. Bathed in the evening light, it looked beautiful, in spite of its flaking paintwork and chipped tiles. The front door was opened by a harried-looking man, still dressed from a long day at the office. Are you Maria? My name's Joseph. I'm Isabel's father. I'm so sorry she bothered you this morning. Please, come in. I'd like to settle up properly. On the mantelpiece, I saw the remains of a broken statue. Without thinking, I picked up a fragment. Ah, my father's statue. What's left of it, at least. Yet another way I'd have disappointed him. It survived a hundred years in this family. But five minutes with Isabel and... Do you think you can salvage it? Will you be able to see the glue afterwards? I don't want people seeing the cracks. Thank <laughs> you. 
Sometimes I think my daughter should come with a warning label. Is this glue really strong enough to hold everything together? Thank you, Maria. It looks as perfect as it ever did. My father wanted me to make something of myself. He didn't have time for anything less. As Joseph put the statue back on the shelf, it nudged against the family portrait stood proudly next to it. So he was Bellariva's mayor, and that was Izzy's mom. They must both miss her so much. Sorry, I'm a little tired. I've been working late getting things sorted for the festival. There's only a few days to go. Looks like I'll be working late, again. When I told my parents I wanted to leave, they always found an excuse to be busy, to avoid talking about it. I guess keeping themselves occupied was their way of pretending it wasn't happening. Joseph's work must have been taking up so much of his time. But maybe that was what he wanted. I just hoped he was finding enough time for Izzy, too. My second day in Bellariva dawned bright and clear, another beautiful sunny morning. Walking into town, I passed cafes overflowing with customers cradling their morning coffees. I stopped, breathing in the smell of roasted coffee beans and freshly baked pastries. I was about to go inside when the owner of Carmen's, the cafe next door, stopped me. Uh, hello, Maria? Were you here yesterday handing out flyers? I have a job for you. Her place was petite, tucked between its competitors as if hoping they wouldn't notice. Judging by the empty tables inside, though, her potential customers hadn't noticed it either. It's a bit slow today, but we're just getting started. <laughs> I'm sure it'll pick up soon. As Carmen chatted, she walked over to the counter and returned with an old rotary phone. At least I've got plenty of time to practice my recipe for the festival. It's a new special I've been working on. I was hoping to call my sister for some, uh, seasoning tips, but it won't connect. Can you see if you can figure out what's wrong? Obviously, we'd normally be much busier than this. You can fix it, can't you? I can't afford to replace it.
Looks like this new circuit board is all hooked up. still a part I need to attach. Where does it go? When I handed the phone back to Carmen, she seemed almost reluctant to take it from me. So it's all working now, is it? I don't have to leave it to dry or let it cool down? Nope, it's ready to go. It'll be ringing off the hook in no time. That's if I can pay my phone bill, anyway. <laughs> and the rent, and the suppliers. Anyway, take a seat and I'll be right with you. Your coffee's on the house. I sat at one of the empty tables, while at the counter, Carmen had started dialing the phone. Hello! How's my favorite sister doing today? As she talked, Carmen became more and more tense. This didn't seem like a call for some cooking advice. I know I still owe you from last time, but I can't afford to take part in the festival if I don't pay. I could almost feel the eye roll at the other end of the line. You don't need to be here, though. Can't you just put the check in the post? When the call ended, Carmen brought me my coffee, her hands trembling. Sorry about that. My sister's decided to fly in for a visit. <sighs> oh god, I have to get ready. Actually, I might have another job for you. Can you come by tomorrow? The next day, I'd promised Carmen I'd return to help her get the cafe ready for her sister's arrival. I was about to set out when I received an unexpected call from my hotel's reception desk. Apparently, another guest had asked for me by name. Curious, I took the creaking elevator up to the top floor and made my way to the room number they'd given. I knocked. Are you here about the camera? It's about time. The woman in front of me was immaculate, not a hair out of place or a crease to be seen. My sister tells me you know how to fix things. I'd usually go to an expert, of course, but in this town... So this was Carmen's sister? The two of them couldn't have been more different. Inside her room, I saw a beautiful reflex camera. Any professional photographer's dream. The viewfinder is completely dark. I can't see anything through it at all. I assume you can figure out what's wrong.
I don't suppose you've fixed anything this valuable before. If I use the screwdriver, I could adjust the angle of the mirror. Perfect. Now the viewfinder should be working. Still a few parts missing. I felt a pang of envy as I handed the camera to Helena. I put my disposable to shame. I picked it up on my first trip to Paris. It's a 1958 limited edition. The first of its kind. It cost me three months salary. But it was worth it. <laughs> I had no idea what three months salary meant to Helena, but I was pretty sure it was more than I could afford. It was strange, really, that we were even staying in the same hotel. I'd picked this place because it was cheap and cheerful, but surely she could afford somewhere better? She took some test shots, fiddling with the camera settings until she was absolutely satisfied. This work is immaculate. At least there's one person in this town who knows what they're doing. Sending you to me might be the first thing Carmen's actually gotten right. I wondered why Helena had bothered coming if she thought so little of her sister. I hear nothing from her for weeks, and then when she finally does call me, all she wants is money. If she thinks I'm lending her another penny, she'll have to convince me it's not a total waste of time. That didn't sound good. If Hurricane Helena was about to hit, I hoped Carmen was ready. The sun was setting over Bellariva by the time I reached Carmen's cafe. From the outside, it looked as quiet as ever, but inside, I found Carmen cleaning like her life depended on it. Maria! Oh, don't mind all of this. If Helena finds one speck of dust in here, I'll never hear the end of it. Carmen seemed pleased to see me, but I sensed the fidgeting tension beneath each sweep of her mop. Trying to live up to the standards of someone like Helena seemed like an impossible task. I hope you didn't mind fixing the camera for her. She was furious when it broke. I really need this to go well. If she doesn't lend me the money, I don't know how long I can keep this place going. Carmen led me to a back room, where she'd laid out the components of what looked like a neon sign. I had this made when I first opened the cafe, but I'm hopeless with electronics. 
So there was supposed to be a sign outside. This might explain the lack of customers. I'd like to put it up before Helena gets here. Can you give it a try? flashes it will really catch people's eye great idea i think i have a spare part that could do that something else. Maybe we can add one of these. I'll screw everything together again and you'll be set. The sign fixed, we headed outside and mounted it carefully over the cafe door. Oh, that's perfect, Maria. It looks just how I imagined it. 
When I had this sign made, it all seemed so simple. Oh, I can't believe I might have to give it all up. I hope I've done enough. The smile froze on her face as she spotted something over my shoulder. I turned to see. Of course, my sister owns the only cafe in this entire town that isn't actually open. For better or worse, Helena had arrived. Carmen opened her mouth to explain, but Helena swept indifferently past her. Finally pausing in the doorway, she turned back towards Carmen. The first thing we're doing is getting rid of that hideous sign. And with that, she disappeared inside. I hoped Carmen's chances of saving the cafe hadn't disappeared with her. It was the day before the festival and the whole town was busy getting ready. I had more work than I knew what to do with. When Joseph called with another job, I was craving the cool quiet of his and Izzy's seafront house. I'd barely reached their front door when I heard someone calling me. Psst. Maria, I need your help. Quickly, it's top secret. It was Izzy, peeking out from the side of the house. She beckoned for me to follow her. She led me through to a beautiful, unruly garden, overflowing with flowers of every color. Nestled among them was a playhouse, its doorway almost completely obscured by a towering rose bush. You have to squeeze past it and breathe in real small, like this. Izzy took in a big gulp of air and crawled through the gap and into the playhouse. I hadn't planned on crawling in the dirt today, but the life of a repair woman never did run smooth. On the table inside, there was an electronic toy. Not exactly the usual stock in my parents' antique shop. I uh, had an accident. I didn't do it on purpose or anything, but uh, it won't turn on anymore. Can you fix it for me?
grown-ups play games as well? Can you show me how to play? I tried before, but it was so hard. Her toy fixed, I watched Izzy retreat into its screen, taking refuge in a three-inch world of her own. Well, I'd better head inside. Your dad is waiting for me. Please don't tell him about the game. He'll think I broke it on purpose. Why would he think that? Because, uh, well, I kind of dropped it really hard at the wall. Izzy looked down, scuffing her shoes on the worn floor of the playhouse. My dad said I have to go to this stupid festival tomorrow and put on a stupid dress, and I don't want to. All he cares about is working. He never wants to see me unless it's for his job. I'm not going. He can't make me. With that, Izzy dove back through the rose bush and disappeared into the wilds of the garden. She was so young. She couldn't be expected to see that her dad was struggling, too. It made me think. Had I really tried hard enough to understand my parents' point of view? I was so focused on the adventures ahead of me. Maybe I didn't care enough about leaving them behind. Leaving Izzy hiding in the garden, I walked around to the front of the house and rang the doorbell. It was only then I noticed my favorite overalls covered in grass stains. I scrubbed desperately, but it was too late. Maria, what are you doing? What happened to your clothes? I was uh, repairing a lawn mower. How unusual. Well, do come in. The job I've got for you is a little more delicate. Totally embarrassed, I walked into an orderly room filled with papers and ledgers. So this was his office. You must be so busy getting ready for the festival. Are you looking forward to it? Of course. It's traditional for the mayor to judge food from every cafe and restaurant in town. I'll be declaring the best chef in Bella Riva by this time tomorrow. Speaking of which... He unclipped the watch from his wrist and very carefully handed it to me. I'll have a tight schedule to follow, but my watch stopped working a while ago. Could you see if you can make it tick again? The main plate has completely cracked. I'll need to replace it. The cogs look good, though. If I'm careful, I can reuse those.
Are you sure it will all fit back together? I've not gone a day without this watch since my wife gave it to me. As I handed the watch back to Joseph, my fingers traced over the engraving on the back. I hoped fixing this was one small way I could help him move forward. I can't believe it's working, Maria. Thank you. My wife was a brilliant woman. Feeling this ticking on my wrist, it makes me feel like she's still here. Watches measure minutes and hours like they're infinite. I didn't know we had so little time. <laughs> Even with Isabel. I barely see her, and when I do, she acts like she hates me. Just then, the phone rang. Even when he was at home, his work was never done. Uh, sorry, Maria. I have to take this. I'll see you at the festival tomorrow. As I left, I turned and saw him pacing the floor of his office, his watch glinting in the afternoon sun. I hoped its quiet ticking would at least bring him some peace during the busy days to come. When my last job of the day brought me to Carmen's apartment, the door was opened by someone I didn't expect to see, Helena. Sorry for inflicting this mess on you. Carmen's never seen a knickknack she doesn't want to buy, apparently. Carmen's apartment was a little chaotic, but totally charming. It was easy to imagine her living in a place like this. It definitely wasn't Helena's style. She seemed more upmarket than flea market. I wondered why she was even here. 
We're having a clear out. Or at least I am. Carmen's not helping. As usual. There's a market at the festival tomorrow. I'm selling some of these things to make her some money. She says she has nothing when there's all this stuff right under her nose. Helena stepped delicately past the items on the floor and reached down to pick up one from the pile. Look at this slide projector. Our parents treasured it, but Carmen treats it like a piece of junk. Can you take a look? light bulb is completely smashed. Okay, I'll need to redirect the light to the lens at the top for the projector to work. Oh, typical. Carmen's even managed to get a slide stuck in here. I was so excited when I moved to the city. Carmen, she looks so sad. Here's the clicker you'll need to attach. <laughs> God knows how Carmen broke that as well. Looks like something is still missing.
Looks like something is still missing. Younger Carmen was always following me around. I suppose she looked up to me, a cool older sister. She used to ask me when I was coming home, but I was always too busy. Those screws still need to be put back. Helena was transfixed, staring at the two young sisters the projector had brought glaringly into focus. I... Oh, I never meant to let her down. But you haven't, have you? You came all this way just to help with the cafe. Plus the money. <sighs> That's the problem. There is no money. I lost my job a few months ago. My savings are almost gone. I have nothing. Carmen thinks I'll throw my checkbook at her bad decisions and make them okay. But I can't. Not this time. You know, the funny thing is, I came here wanting to tell her the truth. But she's so infuriating. How can I ask her for help when all she cares about is herself? Helena fell silent shrinking under the gaze of her younger self, projected onto the wall. We drifted so far apart when I moved away. It felt like the only thing keeping us together was my bank balance. I know I have to tell her the truth. It isn't fair. But I already lost everything else. <sighs> what if I lose her too? The day of the festival finally came, and after all my hard work, I was ready to put down my tools and pick up a fork. The smell as I entered the main square was incredible. Each stall was selling food even more delicious than the last. The competition would start any minute. Most stall holders were waiting anxiously for the mayor to pay them a visit. All of them, that was, except Carmen, who was still frantically chopping vegetables and stirring pots. Maria! Thank God you're here! Can I ask you the world's biggest favor? Helena was supposed to help me run the stall today, but she never turned up. Probably too ashamed to show her face. I can't believe she lied to me! Carmen was stirring so furiously, she was in danger of tipping the pot over altogether. The mayor will be here any minute for the judging, but I'm almost out of my special. She wasn't really going to ask me, was she? Not on my day off. I have a stove ready to build and everything. Can you set it up and make me a spare batch?
it all fits. Now to light the gas. I think that pot is really boiling now. Smells great, if I say so myself. Here are the ingredients that Carmen's given me. What to add first? I'll scoop a spoonful when I'm ready to serve. My part done, Carmen took over and added the finishing touches. It was just in time, and a moment later, Joseph arrived with Izzy in tow. Carmen anxiously handed them both a serving. That was so tasty. Can I have some more, please? Well, you've certainly earned yourself a loyal customer in my daughter. We have a few more meals to taste, but so far you are one of the best. Good luck. Joseph and Izzy looked so happy together. Maybe the festival was doing them some good after all. Carmen, on the other hand, seemed annoyed. But why, when it had all gone so well? I wish Helena was here to see this. She's so convinced I'll never succeed at anything. She wants what's best for you. She's just not very tactful about it. Yes, I, I, know, I know, I know. Even when I was a kid, she pushed me when no one else did. I just wish she hadn't lied to me. But then, I've asked so much of her over the years, I never stopped to think how much she actually had to give. The festival finished. I only had one day left before I had to catch my train and leave Bella Riva behind. I couldn't go without saying goodbye to Carmen. So that evening, I made my way to the cafe. It was unrecognizable. She'd done it. Best food in Bella Riva. Half the town was outside waiting to see what the fuss was about. Maria, Maria, my favorite sous chef. Come on through. It was Carmen, acting every inch the successful cafe owner she deserved to be. Even Helena was there, serving the coffees. This was the last place I expected to see her after yesterday's drama. Carmen led me through to a balcony upstairs, where she brought out an old record player. I found out where Helena was on the day of the festival. 
She was selling her camera to clear the cafe's debts. But then she didn't have much left for herself. So, I've asked her to come and stay with me for a while. We have a lot of catching up to do. I wanted to give her this to cheer her up. We listened to it all the time when we were kids. Do you think it has one last tune in it? Okay, let's see what happens when we turn this on. The speaker isn't connected properly. I should check the wiring. The speaker isn't connected properly. I should check the wiring. Here's the problem. This wiring isn't connected properly. That's the speed dial connected. Now we should be able to change it. I think that should do it. This record should play beautifully. Hmm, it's spinning the wrong way. How can I get it to play in the right direction? It must be to do with the motor. Let's see if one of these spares can turn things around. If I turn the volume up, I should be able to hear it now. It's playing in the right direction. I should check it's turning at the correct speed. The record player's crackling tune must have caught Helena's ear as she appeared a few moments later. Is that my old record player? I can't believe you've kept it all these years, Carmen. Leaning over the music, they looked just like the young sisters the slide projector had preserved all these years, inseparable once again. Carmen told me about your camera. That was a really generous thing to do. I loved that camera, but I love my sister more. Now it's her time to be the person she wants to be. I'm going to stay here with her for a while. Make up for lost time. Carmen and Helena's relationship wasn't suddenly going to be perfect, but they were both prepared to try. And to think, it had all started because of a call Carmen made about some seasoning tips. I guess in the end, maybe it wasn't so hard to just pick up the phone and dial. I hadn't spoken to my own parents in a year. I wanted to hear their voices more than anything. The silence between us was so cavernous. I didn't know how I'd ever find the words to bridge it. My final morning in Bella Riva, I received one last call out to Joseph and Izzy's house. I knew I had to pack, but I figured I could squeeze in one final job before I had to leave. When I arrived, I found Joseph tidying up his wilderness of a garden. The playhouse was already cleared. Inside, I could see Izzy happily testing out her screw driving skills on the back of her cassette deck. You've made quite the impression. 
Isabel, Izzy, tells me she's going to be a repair woman like Maria. <laughs> I'm sure she could be anything she wanted if she put her mind to it. She could. She's a brilliant child. Spending the day with her at the festival, I haven't had so much fun in ages. I wanted to give her something before she starts to forget. Inside, the house was transformed, flooded with light and the sounds of the garden. It felt alive again. This would be my last repair in Bellariva, but it felt like it was the house that had really been restored. It's a music box. It used to play beautifully, but now when I wind it up, nothing happens. I'd love for Izzy to hear it sing again. Can you help? mechanism is completely broken. I'll need to take it all apart before I can fix it. Perfect. The mechanism is good as new. Maria, could you add this family picture of us?
think that's everything back together? My wife used to sing this song to Izzy each night before bed, but I always work too late to join them. Will you dream a dream for me? Or is it nice? I've missed so much already. I want to be the father my wife wanted me to be. I've ended up so much like my own father, working all the time. Izzy needs me more than that. Especially now it's just the two of us. My daughter comes first. Well, not until she gets bored of her stuffy old dad anyway. I'll never ever get bored of you, Dad. Izzy came running into the room where Joseph scooped her up and onto his shoulders. She gazed at the music box, her eyes shining. I'd never seen her look so happy. Thank you, Maria, for everything. The things you fixed for me, I'm so glad to have them back. Joseph was a good father, and I could tell he was determined to be an even better one. When it came down to it, that was all any of us wanted. A second chance to make something right. My time in Bellariva was almost over, but before I left, I knew there was something of my own I needed to fix. My time in Bellariva was almost at an end. Another chapter finished in a story whose ending I hadn't felt ready to write. The people I'd met, the items I'd restored, they taught me so much about what was really important. Pulling out my suitcase from beneath the bed, I remembered the day I stole it from my parents' shop, the day I left. Afterwards, I was too ashamed to call them, to apologize. It was a guilt I'd been carrying around every day since. As I packed, I knew that it was up to me to find a way to lighten the load. Helena gave me these designer shirts. Not sure I'll pull them off as well as she does. My parents would love Bellariva. Maybe I can convince them to make the trip. Izzy gave me this in exchange for my repair manual. She'll be a pro in no time. My train ticket. I can't believe it's time to leave the My suitcase was full, but it was my heart that felt heavy as I made my way to the station. I was sorry to be leaving Bella Riva behind, but I hoped that, in my own small way, I'd made a difference. Helena and Carmen's reunion was possible because they'd learned to overcome their differences. Joseph had realized he shouldn't let his grief or his work get in the way of his relationship with Izzy. They'd each learned to see things from someone else's perspective. Maybe it was time I saw things through my parents' eyes. I knew it would be easier to jump on the next train, put even more distance between us, but I finally felt ready to talk to them. I just didn't know if they would feel the same. Did I even remember their number? I wasn't sure until I reached for the phone and it all came flooding back. Mom? Dad? Maria? Is that you? Dear Maria, Carmen here. 
Sorry I haven't written. The cafe's been absolutely manic since you left. Luckily, I have Helena here to help. You wouldn't recognise her. She's like a new woman. She's always running round, taking orders and making drinks. I even heard her compliment a customer on their outfit. Personally, I draw the line at fluorescent green bowling shirts, but each to their own. It certainly made the customer smile. She misses the city, though. Bellariva's many things, but it's definitely not as chic as she'd like. She said there was a coffee shop near her old apartment where they made coffee with a shape drawn on top. It got me thinking, I'm an award-winning chef. I can figure out how to put a leaf on a cappuccino. A bit of cosmopolitan coffee might be just what Helena needs. Of course, ordering a new coffee machine was the easy part. I wish you could have seen the mess I got into trying to put the thing together. I saw Maria use her screwdriver a million times. Taking this apart will be easy. These pipes look pretty simple. I should start with them. I'll need to connect all the pipes correctly to stop the steam pouring out. Finally, no more steam.
think that's everything? Better test the buttons, just to make sure. All done! Piece of cake. Time to make my first coffee, I think. to make it look magical. Perfect coffee. All it needs is a saucer and a couple of Helena's favourite biscuits. I was feeling more has-been than coffee queen by the time I'd made a drink fit for human consumption. It looked a bit, uh, mm, postmodern, but knowing Helena's refined tastes, I hope she'd think it was intentional. Always the connoisseur. She didn't even bother to look at it at first. She was so busy wafting it under her nose. Steamed up her glasses, of course. How was she going to see my work of art through an eye full of fog? When she finally spotted it, though, she was totally impressed. I'll admit, she spent several minutes trying to figure out exactly what it was I'd drawn. She decided it was probably a horse. <laughs> well, what she doesn't know won't hurt her. She was impressed enough to ask for another one. I guess I'll need to get some practice in. The whole thing was such hard work, Maria. I never realised how difficult it was, all that mechanical stuff. It made me realise how much I have to thank you for, so I wanted to say that now. Better latte than never. <laughs> <sighs> Hoping you're well. Your friend, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> 